and welcome to Call Your Damn Jets. Um, as you can see, I have a new audio setup. Uh, I thought my sound was uh, not great. And I watched a bunch of videos on the Yeti and I found that um, it really likes to be in your face, this mic. So I got a boom and a shock absorber to prevent you from hearing a clunk a clunk every time I type. Um, so today what I want to do is go over um, military language and cancer or military language and any ongoing disease really. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Um, I'm not a fan of using military language to describe people who have uh, chronic conditions. Uh, and I'm going to concentrate on cancer, but I may talk a little bit about heart disease also, because I do have heart disease. Uh, I have familial hypercholesterolemia, besides having the lymphoma, so I'm a whole bucket of joy. Um, so the other day I was on the internet and I was doing a search, I don't remember what I was searching for, but I, I landed at some point on Etsy and, and cancer mugs. And I saw a bunch of mugs uh, about cancer that said, I won. And then I was looking at that, and I was wondering, what did you win? Did you win getting cancer? Probably the people who have those mugs, they think like, you know, or that are given those mugs, because sometimes it's not the people who have cancer that buy them. Other people give it to them for the heck of it. Um... Probably, you know, it's a celebration of the fact that they survive cancer. Uh, but the the words I want to me are ambiguous and I, I just don't like it. And I'm going to explain why I don't like it. Um, I saw on the same page there were other mugs and some of the mugs said I survived cancer. And I much prefer I survive cancer than I won because I survive cancer is des descriptive. If you, in fact, you had treatment and you are surviving cancer, you're still living right now, uh, then, you know, this is descriptive. You survive cancer. Whereas I won, it's, not necessarily. You don't. You, don't necessarily, you haven't necessarily won cancer, uh, or you haven't necessarily been cured from cancer, um, because when you get cancer, it's not like getting the flu or having a bone broken. Um, you don't really recover completely from it, as far as I know. I mean, there are a million tons of different types of cancers. Um, and some of them are more, uh, amenable to treatment than other cancers. But when you have cancer, you know, if you have a broken bone, you go to the hospital, the, they might reset your, your arm. And then after a while, you're considered cure from your bone fracture. You may have uh, lasting problems with that arm, but you're going to be okay. Um, and it's not going to progress further, um, usually. But cancer, it's not like that. When you have cancer, um, first of all, the doctors are reluctant to talk about cures. Sometimes they do. My own oncologist talked about curing me from cancer with a stem cell transplant. Um, but at the same time, I know from talking to him and talking to other people that the cancer can come back at any time. Um, and that's why I had a stem cell transplant is that people who have a primary sinus lymphoma and don't get the stem cell transplant, there's a high incidence of recurring cancer and then they have to be treated again. Um, or they can be on kind of a ke periodic chemo to try to prevent the cancer from coming back, but that's, that's not nice. Uh, chemo is not fun. Um, so it may come back at any time, um, and I'm going to have to live with it until I die. And it's very clear to me because I have to have MRIs every so often. Right now it's every three months, eventually it's going to be every six months, and eventually it's going to be yearly. But as far as I know, that plan is uh, going on until the day I die. Um... So it can come back. So if you say somebody, you know, you won, but 
it can always come back, so you haven't really won. And I and, and I'd like to know which cancer cannot come back. Um, I don't know of any cancer that cannot come back. And not only your cancer that you had originally can come back, but your cancer can transform into a different cancer. Some lymphomas can transform into other lymphomas, or you can be treated and the treatment takes care of the first cancer, but then you have another cancer. And I've read stories of people who have relapsed twice, three times. Um, when do you say I won? Um, you always have to be vigilant. Um, and it's a little bit like my heart disease. Uh, though in my heart disease, the language is not uh, so much militaristic about winning. A lot of the heart disease language is about culpability. It's like you have high cholesterol, you should change your diet. You should exercise. You should do this. You should do that. You should. There's all kinds of things that people, opinions that people have about what you should be doing, and really, um, there's no for people with familial hypocholesterolemia like I do. There's no hamburger that you can push away. I'm vegetarian. I'm vegetarian. You know, <laughs> it's like. I'm better, I'm doing better with my diet than, than the population that the doctors usually see. So I'm vegetarian, I eat low fat I, and everything, and my body still produces cholesterol. I can work two hours a day and doesn't make a dent in my cholesterol level. What made the difference is the PCS scanner inhibitor. So for, for heart disease, it's not as much militaristic, but it is, uh, there's a lot of culpability language used for talking about it. It's like, if you have high cholesterol, there are things you should do in your life, change this and change that, and then you're going to have normal cholesterol. No, it doesn't work that way for everyone. For a lot of people, it does work that way. I still don't think that it's useful to culpabilize them about their diet or their lifestyle. But for some people, like myself and other French Canadians, because French Canadians is a high incidence in that population of um, familial hypercholesterolemia, um, there's nothing. There's nothing you can do. The diet is going to help a little bit. The the lifestyle is going to help a little bit. The exercise is going to help a little bit. It all helps a little bit. You know, it's the difference between being atrocious and being okay. But I was not. I didn't have a, a cholesterol level that was completely fine until I found the right drug, which is the PCSK9 inhibitor. Once I got on that, my cholesterol level became fine. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't like it in the heart disease context where people are culpabilizing, culpabil, people are culpabilizing other people. I'm probably mispronouncing that like hell. Um, <laughs> And I don't like on the lymphoma side or on the cancer side, you know, the whole military language. Um, and if you're in the cancer world at all and you're talking to other people and you're active in that world, I'm sorry to say you're going to have friends who are going to die from cancer. It's going to happen. It happened to me. I had somebody on Discord that I was talking to and I was helping her and I was, you know, giving her moral support, but I was not using the damn militaristic language. I was just, you know, there for her and listening to her and she was telling me that her lymphoma was, you know, I had special features. For instance, it was too close to the heart. It couldn't use radiation because it would have damaged the heart and there were this and there were that. And she had a lot of medicine allergies, so she couldn't get pain medicine even. Um... And, you know, I listened to her and at some point there was a gap in her communications and eventually her little sister came online and told me that she died. Um, and I don't think for one second, her name is Brie, I don't think for one second that Brie was there and, and was not fighting, or I should not say fighting because it's still the militaristic language. She was not, you know... Um, on top of everything she needed to do to beat that cancer. Um, she did everything she could. She had all the treatments she could, and she just didn't make it. And the cancer, you know, that's the way it is with cancer. There's, there's nothing... 
And that's the problem with the militaristic language. It's like the militaristic language, there's some notion that, well, if you had fought hard enough, you could have beaten the cancer. If you had done this or done that, you would have been okay. But uh, cancer is outside our control. You know, it's our body that is going haywire. The cells are multiplying in the wrong way. And there's nothing we can do about it. You know, it's not like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten this thing and then I would have not have gotten cancer. I shouldn't have done that thing or and I wouldn't have gotten cancer. Sometimes, sometimes it's true it can happen. Sometimes if you work in a nuclear plant and you don't use protection, you know, you ha- your incidence of cancer is probably higher than for the general population. And there, there can be behaviors that, that promote cancer. But generally, it's not the case. You know, I, I have a lymphoma. A lot of times when they say people have lymphomas because of da, 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 the list of reasons is like somebody had AIDS. I don't have AIDS. Somebody has uh, an immune disease. I don't have an immune disease. Where did the lymphoma come from? It just happened. I And I was wondering, I mentioned it in my lymphoma videos, I was wondering if whether the pandemic had an effect, and not directly, but indirectly. Like, I use hand sanitizers, and maybe the hand sanitizers caused it. But my first symptoms happened before the pandemic, a few months before the pandemic. So, it's not the pandemic has nothing to do with my cancer. Uh, you know, it's my genes, my body um, decided, like, at some point, it gave me the middle finger, and that's it. You have cancer now. Um so I'm going to live with that thing forever. So, you know, yes, I survived cancer. And I do use the language of survivorship. I survived cancer. And I'm going to have to think about it every day for the rest of my life. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to die of falling down the stairs or something else. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's with me forever. And I haven't won I cannot tell anybody with an any degree of certainty that I've won against cancer. I'm, I've survived cancer. Uh, oh, and hopefully if it comes back, there's going to be better treatment, better treatments for me to use than the stem cell transplant, which the stem cell transplant is, is fine as far as treatments go, but it can fail. And sometimes where your treatment fails, it opens the door to uh, clinical trials or other things in the future. Um, when I research this, this topic a little bit, I mean, you're getting mostly my opinion, uh, but I did research a little bit and I found articles on Wikipedia that I'm going to put in the description. Um, and I also found articles on The Guardian and... There was one article uh, that was published uh, in 2019 by Ian Sample, and it says that the the headline is War on Cancer Metaphors May Do Harm, research shows. Um, So if you're interested in that, I invite you to click in the description. I'm going to put the link for that article. Uh, Another article that I read was again in The Guardian. It was published in 2014 by Kate Granger. Having cancer is not a fight or a battle. And she's talking about against the militaristic language. And I did read the article completely from top to bottom. Uh, she She's a little bit more pessimistic than I am. Uh, and she doesn't even talk, want to talk about being a survivor, which I find surprising because survivor is descriptive. You know, you've survived so far. You survived cancer. We, I cannot tell you what's going to happen next year or ten years from now, but so far you survived. So I'm, uh, I'm not completely on board with her about that. Um, and it's generally the adjective that others suggest when instead of using the military language, you know, you say they're survivors. They didn't win the battle or they didn't lose the battle. Somebody's a survivor or somebody died. Um, and she also has a, a portion of the article talking about, you know, that cancer is never going to be cured and... Um, and it's always going to be with us. 
I partially agree with her. I think cancer is always going to be with us in the sense that, you know, there's no sign that, uh, you know, even the common cold is disappearing anytime soon or the flu. Uh, it's going to, cancer is going to be with us for a long time. But I think with advances in medicine, it's going to become more like having a cold or like having the flu and that people are not going to, you know, have this notion that, oh, I have cancer and then I'm going to die. Uh, even I can take my case. When I was a child and they were doing shows on TV, you know, uh, to get money for cancer, that was a very somber affair. It's like this person has cancer, that person has cancer. They would have patients come on the stage and everybody was very serious about it. And it was, you know, this person is probably going to die. <laughs> um it was that serious. And my own cancer, I have mentioned that again in the lymphoma videos, but my own cancer, 30 years ago, it was a death sentence. And 10 years ago, the treatment that I got was experimental. So I think we're getting to the point where having cancer is going to be more like having the flu or having, you know, you're going to have a period of treatment and then after that, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be able to go on your way, and maybe people at that time are gonna talk up, are gonna talk more about cancer being cured, um, and there will be less milita militaristic language about fighting cancer, being a survivor, uh, and and fighting the battle and winning the battle, uh, because you know you don't nobody gets prizes for winning battles against the flu it's like you got the flu then you have the flu for a while and then you the flu goes away and nobody comes to your house and gives you a mug that says i won because i beat the flu <laughs> um so i'm hoping cancer is going to be become more like that so yeah i don't i don't like the militaristic uh or the military language around cancer uh, and I think it does harm. And I mentioned articles. I There's a lot of other articles you can find uh, if you do a search about uh, military language and cancer or militaristic language and cancer and, you know, what people have been saying about it. And I think it goes for most chronic diseases. Uh, you can find the same thing, I think, about uh, multiple sclerosis. And initially, I was misdiagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So I, I've been around those people and there's this kind of same thing going on where they talk about, you know, uh, a fight with the, the disease. You you learn to compose with your disease, your chronic disease. Uh, so, yeah, those those were my thoughts about uh, the militaristic language or the military language and cancer. Um, so I'm going to stop it here and say goodbye and see you next episode.